Hey guys, welcome to Black Angus Reviews. Doing another impromptu uh, backyard video, enjoying some Shinerbach prickly pear. Highly suggest it if it's available in your area. Um, it's the topic of the day. Going back to the old Brie Larson well. <laughs> Man, I had a friend on Twitter that, you know, I sporadically talk to. I really, really like him, but I never know when I'll hear from him. Or him, me, for that matter. Uh, sent me a video. Someone crying about Brie Larson's YouTube success off of video one. And uh, I'm saying, like, I'm not envious and blah blah blah. And it's like, then what the fuck are you then? Because you're going on for like 20 minutes crying about this chick's success. Uh, it's just like, what'd you expect, you know? Now you know what it feels like. Now you know what it feels like. Uh, what guys deal with on all sorts of platforms and fandoms when they put their heart and soul into uh, covering and uh, investing in a fandom or lore. And then some thought comes in with minimal knowledge and base level fandom, but she's got tits. So you know, all the success is hers. <laughs> now you get a taste of that. It's funny. It's funny as fuck, honestly. Uh, you know, with Captain Marvel, but well, beforehand, actually, I, I had this Alex Jones crazy guy theory uh, about Star Wars Theory's Vader film and the copyright strike. If you don't know, he did a, f a fan film that he couldn't crowdfund because uh, it's against Disney allowances or whatever to use their characters with for-profit crowdfunding. So he had to, you know, fund himself um, for like 100 25,000, 250,000 to make this like 15 minute film, uh, a Vader fan film. It was awesome. And then like three or four weeks after it comes out, Warren, Warner Chapel copyright strikes his music, which was originally created to sound like Star Wars, but it was original. Uh, and you're thinking Warner, that's, is that Warner Brothers? Yes, it's Warner Brothers. Somehow they own the rights to some Star Wars music. And it was a manual it wasn't like a auto-generated copyright. It was a manual copyright. Weeks after the fact of its release. Um, and if Star Wars, you know, copyright infringements, their interest, like, you think they would have done this like day one. I said this was collusion. This was collusion in Hollywood that uh, Disney, especially Lucasfilm after Last Jedi, is trying to get an ace in the hole, win fans back. And so they orchestrated this to look like the heroes like hey lucasfilm stopped this copyright fiasco for star wars theory um for all the hard work he's put in because he's already not making money on it and he's already put his own money into making it and um people thought it was crazy and then two three months later captain marvel once the c score kept dropping dropping we were review bombing it as uh, the media was saying trolling captain marvel score so i wanted to see uh, had no bearing on reviewing and uh overnight midnight one day they pulled that system uh that ability from the whole side rotten tomatoes uh shielding captain marvel which is weird because fandango owns rotten tomatoes fandango is owned by i think comcast um which is like universal and uh warner brothers they have like majority shares um so it's weird with Shazam coming out that they wouldn't, you know, let Disney take a big hit publicly. Uh, but yeah, then come to find out Fandango has a lot of Disney employees uh, at the top. So it seems like I said collusion. <laughs> you know, I think Hollywood's really afraid of uh, a comic skate type of revolution in film. That's what I thought the Phantom Menace could be. So it's been a disappointing couple of years, especially with Captain Marvel at the at the core of this discussion, Brie Larson. Um, but yeah, it's funny, you know, you see all these chatterheads jumping on this, you know, going back to this Captain Marvel well, like the quartering. Quartering's got 800, like 20,000 subs. Um, I don't know why people rely on him for, you know, valid discussion. The dude's all about capitalism, but then he's always attacking Amaranth and, uh, you know, thoughts for using a system that favors him to make money. Uh, oh, they funnel guys with their Twitters to their Patreons to their OnlyFans. It's like, okay. Uh, are you assuming guys are too dumb to, like, know what's up, you know? Uh, 
No, they're all victims, though. So he's got some deal with Amaranth and, and other thoughts. Um, dude hops from controversy to controversy with no real kind of, you know, seeming hardcore fandom about anything. It's just he hops, you know. And I think he really kind of, his involvement in the fandom is, in my view, uh, really kind of uh, diluted what was fun about it. Um, and Captain Marvel's, you know, part of that too. Capitalizing on mass, low quality, McDonald's level Captain Marvel videos, <laughs> Brie Larson videos. And so it's funny to see these people trying to do it again across uh, YouTube and not really having success, at least for the size of their channels. You know, it's like, yeah, no one really cares. They got Corona going on. We got all these issues to be talking about. You got stuff going on in film and theaters and stuff. Uh, and the only like entertainment shit of value we're really seeing is Last of Us. I don't really give a fuck about gaming, and honestly, the game looks pretty fun. Um, sometimes a story needs, like, a curveball. Sorry, there's, like, some trans shit involved with your shit. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that, kind of have a laugh at uh, people's expense for their Brie derangement syndrome, you know? Uh, everyone's so quick to jump on anything for uh, clicks. They don't think about like how it might affect perception of themselves uh, and the quality of their channel. Uh, let me know what y'all thought about this. Did you even care? Were you aware at all? Um, are you living real life and trying to enjoy stuff or you know invest in things that actually matter? Me even talking about this, laughing at people talking about it, it's kind of a waste of time. <laughs> and I can admit it. <laughs> it's low-hanging fruit, honestly. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments. We'll chat, and uh, I'll see you around next time. Uh, again, enjoy a cold one uh, on my behalf. See you around.